Not here. The Commission of Inquiry into State Capture kicks off in uh, Parktown, Johannesburg this morning. It is being chaired by Deputy Chief Justice Raymond Zondo. It will be probing allegations of fraud and corruption at state-owned entities. Uh, former Finance Minister Mkabisi Jonas and uh, former ANC MP Feki Mentor are among uh, the first witnesses who have been called to testify at the inquiry. Uh, former President Jacob Zuma is also expected to testify at some stage about his alleged involvement uh, with the Gupta family. The former state Statesman has been accused of facilitating government deals for the Guptas, a claim he has repeatedly denied. The commission was established in March after a high court ruling ordered Zuma to comply with the Public Protector's remedial action on allegations of business influencing deals in government. All right, and uh, for more on this, we're joined uh, in studio by Scopa Chairperson uh, Temba Gordi. Mr. Gordi, always a pleasure to see you. Thank you very much for joining us here on uh, Afro World View. Thank you. Thank you well, very as, much. as a start, we, we've seen some reports uh, that have been suggesting uh, that the inquiry is likely to be disturbing um, as uh, the full extent of state capture is unearthed. Would you agree? Well, look, the narrative around um, state capture has depended very much on which side an individual is on. To some, state capture is about investigating the Guptas, and that's it. But uh, our understanding uh, is that state capture looks at the extent to which um, <clears throat> the intersection between business and politics have come to influence the way in which the state, uh, which spends about 500 billion rands annually on procurement, uh, might have been compromised to flout uh, supply chain management processes uh, in favor of particular individuals. Mm. And I think <clears throat> if you look at the reports of the, the Auditor General, um, whether it is municipalities or provincial na national government, the extent of the fruitless and wasteful expenditure as well as the irregular expenditure, it tells you that uh, the flouting of SEM processes surely is way, way bigger than just uh, one family or just one or two people. Mm. You, what do you think that uh, this uh, you know, commission will sort of mean for us going forward? And also, I think I'd, I'd like to talk about what it means for the past. I mean, retrospectively, will there be any effects? I mean, you talk about the fact that it's really about business and politics uh, sort of intersecting and not necessarily just about finding out what the Guptas did and how much money the Guptas got. But what does it mean going forward in terms of the fact that we know that business and politics have always intersected and we've known that politicians have given you know better deals or made deals for their friends who are in business what does this mean and what will this inquiry perhaps help in terms of going forward when it comes to this situation which has been happening and is still going on well look my <coughs> my simple approach has always been that a, a, a capitalist state is a captured state yeah it depends on who has captured it um, no one will claim that uh, if you remove the Guptas from the scene, you are going to find a clean state. Yeah. You are going to find businesses that had no interest uh, in government. So the the narrative around state capture and the way it is being framed and approached um, is is itself influenced and a product of some political battles uh, that are going on. And I think what. Uh, uh, Deputy Chief Justice Zondo has to try and do is to take away the politics to look at uh, the issue around uh, corruption. That's why some of us have always maintained that uh, if, if you want to clean your house, you're not just going to clean one room. You're not just going to look at the, at the Guptas. Because you want to clean, you want to stop the phenomenon of, of state capture, you want to stop the phenomenon of uh, businesses influencing politicians. I mean, who introduced money into the ANC Youth League? It was Brett Cable. Uh, and, and I'm sure there are many others uh, who, who have done that. So if, if, if Judge Zondo can you know, be able to steer it away from the hysteria that seeks to shape the narrative in a very narrow sense, then it will be helpful to the country. But if it's going to be narrow focused, then it's merely going to be a fictional battle that does not uh, uh, take us anywhere.
You know, what does uh, South Africa still uh, need to know? It seems, you know, we already know about, you know, the looting of uh, public funds. But what else needs to sort of be unraveled? You talk about the fact that, you know, if you're cleaning your house, you're not just cleaning uh, one room. So what is in all these other rooms? What is the dirt that is in all these other rooms uh, if we use what, you know, what you used? No, look, uh, my, my point is that uh, the the there's a contestation about what the inquiry should be all about mm. and what state capture is. There are those to whom state capture means the Guptas and former President Jacob Zuma. And there are those to whom state capture means the influence that business has on decisions that politicians take. And um, we were saying that uh, these, I think the difference might be the Guptas were just arrogant, were crude and, and very narrow and short-sighted whereas others do it with a lot of finance, uh, but, it is, but, but it has the same impact and the same effect. I mean, if you look at, uh, at the influence of uh, or, or the tentacles of Bidvest, for example, I mean, even our toilets in Parliament are cleaned by Bidvest. Uh, you go to SAA, you go to AXA, um, is that state capture? Have they captured these institutions? You look at um, Protecoin, security company, Transnet, did a contract that was extended 13 times without going on tender. What is that? Is that, is that, is that what you call state capture or what? So I'm, I'm just saying that uh, the, the way the, the, the narrative around state capture has come, you know, in the popular psychology, it has just been the Gupta. So to others, it is more a process to expose how uh, former President Jacob Zuma and the Guptas went around doing a lot of wrong things. Mm. And yet... This being a state uh, inquiry cannot be a means to, to settle factional battles. It has to serve a public purpose, a genuinely public purpose of seeking to check who within business might have used their uh, economic muscle to sway uh, processes in their favor. And I think you, you will certainly and definitely find a lot of that. And I think, like I say, if you look at the reports of the Auditor General, you find that uh, a lot of transactions um, have happened that should not have happened the way they have because certain individuals were captured or are influenced uh, by particular individuals. I think it, it might be a little bit difficult, and maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong, I think it might be difficult to, to separate uh, politics uh, from business and those sort of uh, private interests in that, uh, you know, political parties, they, they need to function, for example. So you might have a situation where, you know, these private companies mm -hmm. or these wealthy individuals yeah. are, you know, donating funds to those political parties sure. that they favor, and we've covered that uh, quite extensively sure. in, in the media as well. This is something that will likely uh, continue, whether we're told who is donating to which company or not. Then we know that once these political parties get some kind of power, it's payback time. It's just the way of, of yeah. business. So it's difficult to, to, to kind of uh, detach uh, those two. I, I wonder, you know, you talk about, for instance, uh, the fact that these uh, uh, companies or individuals will use their economic muscle to, 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 to sway uh, politicians or, or, or political parties mm -hmm. and uh, these, uh, these uh, transactions that have been continuing. Do you think that there is a possibility that we'd be able to, after all these examples that I've just given you, do you think that there is a, a possibility of uh, uh, the two functioning separately? I mean, you talk about, you know, you just said the example now, but if it cleans toilets in, in, in Parliament, mm -hmm. those toilets need to be cleaned. Who else, who else will do it if Parliament finds that, you know, that's who they're doing business with? <laughs> Well, look, um, there are two aspects to it. One, it's the extent to which uh, business uh, influence politics or political parties. Um, we have tried in Parliament to pass the Political Party Funding Act, which is waiting the signature of the president. Mm. And it appears from the reports that we've seen that there is strong lobby from certain quarters that that bill should not, should not, be, should not be implemented soon because then political parties will be forced to reveal who funds them. Mm. And it seems that's one thing political parties agree on, though. Well, no, not really. I think when we were busy with it, it was only the DA <coughs> and to some extent the EFF that had one or two objections. But uh, otherwise, everybody was agreed that uh, we need to have this act passed. So 
it will expose because unless and until you know who fund your your parties you will not know who controls your your democracy um but also from a <clears throat> from a, a, a marxist uh, analysis of society you have the base you have the superstructure uh, the superstructure is the politics the base is the economy and whoever controls the base controls the superstructure mm. so you can't have politics that is independent of those who who own and control the monies. <clears throat> so that is at political level. So if you have the Party Political uh, Funding Act, it seeks to lessen the influence uh, of big business on, on political parties and the policies that they pursue. But the second element is at a personal level, where people who are in supply chain management uh, get compromised with inducements. Uh, that is why in 2014, Cabinet took a decision that all people who are in supply chain management within the state must be vetted by state security. Unfortunately, that has not happened. Uh, when you go to SAA, you find that uh, some board members and even executives actually refused uh, to be vetted. So you have people in supply chain whose ethics um, have not been confirmed. Mm -hmm. So, so the, the issue of business influencing politics, uh, influencing society, I think it's a conundrum that will persist, that will continue to have, uh, and which we see all over the world. Um, I think we've had allegations that the troubles for Patricia de Lille in Cape Town was refusing uh, to give a contract to some Israeli company that was meant to donate over 500 million to the DA. So I'm just saying those things are there. So if, you, if you're going to talk state capture and in, in simple form meaning the influence that uh, business have on administrative and political processes, uh, it's going to be wide. But if, you, if for you it's the Guptas and Zuma, well, that's something else. So that's why I said the narrative around what is state capture, what it means and where it is going, tends to be a bit subjective. And it's up to Deputy Chief Justice Zondo to make sure that uh, he does a good job that is above board. Mm -hmm. And those who have made submissions against others other than just the Guptas are also given an equal hearing and the public is able to know who else have been involved in shenanigans? Well, you know, I've spoken uh, quite a bit about you know why this uh, inquiry is, is is necessary. But I think I also want to talk about um, you know leading after that. You know, what will the public really uh, uh, get out of it? I mean, it, it, it's already costs more to have uh, uh, to even have this kind of uh, inquiry. Um, you know, will the will monies be be paid back? And if so, you know, who will they serve? Why should we? necessarily care about this and what does it solve? Look, for me there are, there are two things and uh, I'm not being cynical about uh, whether we should have the inquiry or not. It's fine, it's a done deal, it's there. Mm. But there are, two, <clears throat> there are two elements. One is the SIU uh, which can and has always been used to, to investigate uh, instances of maladministration, of corruption and all the like. And the SIU has a right, in fact, the way they work, they find wrongdoing. They can uh, recommend disciplinary action and assist and stand as witnesses. Where they find criminality, they refer to the NPA uh, for prosecution. Now, we have just amended the Audit Act to give the Auditor General powers to direct investigations into specific cases and areas where um, irregular expenditure, fruitless and wasteful expenditure has occurred. These two, for me, if they are used uh, fully, you would have no need for the inquiry because mm. all you'll get in the inquiry is who did what. You were influenced by so and so, and then what? Then refer to the police or refer for disciplinary action. So if these two institutions are working properly or utilized fully, you will not need the inquiry because what you're going to get will just be salacious uh, statements about who did what and did not do what, but at the end, it will have to come back to uh, to the police mm. uh, and back to the department for disciplinary action. I'd like to just ask you in, in closing, really, um, and I suppose this is a difficult one for you, but what are you uh, expecting to, to, to come out of, of, of this inquiry? Look, um, I think you're going to have allegations and counter-allegations. And like I say, it is, it is really a battle between those who have always uh, seen corruption. Because look, when we're fighting for freedom, we're terrorists. And after 94, we're just corrupt people who are after money. So you're going to have 
that narrative being pushed mm -hmm. and narrowed down to the Zuma administration. And we're going to have those who say, but uh, uh, big companies have been so corrupt and no focus has been put on them. Yeah. Uh, let us use this inquiry to, to put a counter narrative. Um, I don't know what the former president is going to say, but somebody was saying to me, uh, when Des Van Rooyen was made minister, a uh, big business called the president and told him, if you, and told him, appoint Pravin God, and if you don't, we have the capacity to pull down the economy. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know whether that is, that is state capture or whether that is the kind of influence that some people wield that impact yeah. on the decisions that politicians take. Yeah. So, like I say, it, it all depends. The narrative is itself captured uh, from where I'm standing. And if you go by what we see on a daily basis, state capture is about the Guptas and former President Jacob Zuma. So it's up to Deputy Chief Justice Zondo to steer it uh, on the correct legal uh, definition of what uh, this inquiry is supposed to be all about. Mr. Cody, a great pleasure having you here with us. Thank you so much for this analysis and unpacking uh, this for us. And we hope you'll be joining us in studio as this inquiry uh, sort of uh, progresses. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much.